What's going on, everybody? I am the one, the only, the W O O K I E. Joined in order by the Smoke Show Drazcore. What's up, Drazcore? Hey, how's it going, guys? We got Ewok to the J to the R. Hello, Keyforge community. Glad to celebrate this 57th episode with you, Drazcore. <laughs> You've been keeping track. Well, yeah, so uh, yeah, I feel like I should explain that for a second. I did mention because I've not been on fifty-seven episodes. Of I didn't think so. Honor. I was like, that seems like a no, not real number. No, 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 no. I uh, I was commenting That's that cool. I I have a little running list of like the podcast episodes I've done, and uh, starting with the amazingly named KFPL Weekly uh, podcast. And so, if you combine those two podcasts together, uh, I've been on fifty-seven episodes, which of podcasting land place. in your podcast career. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right. Yep, yep. And many more, many more. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I got to go back and update my resume. Yeah, I would do uh 57. I would ask yep. for a raise if I were you. I, yeah. 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 Like a million percent. Uh, that might be a bit much, but inflation yeah, is I up mean, this year. I mean, time zero. It's not really that. Oh, no. I mean, well, you could just make me feel good. I could. And then there's sheep. What's up, sheep? <laughs> I'm losing at Keyforge. He's often Aww. losing at Keyforge. How's that double chronophage Aww. deck going, uh, treating you? It, uh, it is chronophaging me. It is chronophaging. <laughs> Perfect. It is certainly chronophaging. It's doing what chronophage was designed to do? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm just frankly, glad somebody else I has killed the him before he landed all his taunties. Because he's got a bunch of dirty taunties. Yep. Like I said, I'm just glad somebody else has the sickness like I do. So, I mean, yeah. Oh, crap. I got a chronic face, too. Oh, yeah. nice. But uh, we got we got ABR going on this week. Uh, Drascore, what's the uh, big ABR announcements? Well, uh, I, uh, going into this week, we're coming in on the high horse, the horseman's the hiatus in first place. And then... Uh, Somebody, you know, um, Flaming Hobo was like, hey, you know, it's it's all so close for first place. What's going to happen? And I was, you know, uh, I went in and I was just like, yeah, horsemen are going to take that at all. You know, smiley face. And then we proceeded to lose four games in a row. <laughs> and then he started giving me a hard time on the captain's channel because uh, <laughs> I caught it and be like, it's going to be us. <laughs> and then uh, I believe the old phrase um, that I remember growing up was talk shit, get hit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that's what happened. <laughs> and the, yes. There were, uh, there were gifs flying at me and all sorts of things. Yes. <laughs> oh boy. I don't even want to get into that. Is it gif or gif? Oh, definitely gif. It's definitely gif. Anyways, uh, <laughs> vault keeper. <laughs> Uh, by the time you get to this, Vault Keeper will have come and gone, but it is this weekend coming up. Um, you guys, you guys are all participating in Vault Keeper, are you not? We are. I am not. I am not, and I'm going to tell you why. Is everybody ready for this? Because you got to work. No, mm. I have a much better reason. You know, this is the second time now. I don't remember what the first time was, but there was actually a good reason, and I had to do something with my wife. Wife and kids. It it was your anniversary. No, no. It wasn't my anniversary. My anniversary is this weekend. (laughs) You have have multiple anniversaries, man. (laughs) No, my anniversary is this weekend. All right. Anyway. What was the first one? It was a birthday last time. What was the first one? Birthday? Something? It might have been a birthday. Oh. I don't remember when he ran the first one. I know this one, it came up quick. Was it back in February? Something like that. Yeah, it might have been my birthday. And I was being dragged to something. Because people mm. think I like that type of thing. Mm. You know. But it, it was what it was. I don't remember what it was. I know there was something going on. It wasn't an anniversary. It was, but Because my, my wedding anniversary is legitimately this weekend. Um, It will oh. be 15 years this week. Oh, you're so nice. old. I know. Jeez. Nice. I, oh, I, think I, I think I just slipped a hip. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, man. 
craziness. Um, but lots to talk about this week. It's been a while since we've had um, a good chunk of like Keyforge stuff and things. It was in February this year, where February 19th, 20th, oh, 26th. That would have been my birthday. And oh, I, yeah, it was my birthday, and my sister was in town. That's what it would have, would have been. So I had to go to uh, do stuff and things with my sister because she only comes, she lives in Iowa. So I only get to see her every so often. So Wait, we, we do have, we have news. That's yes. right. News, news from Dr. Garfield himself. So not FFG. No, no, <laughs> no. no. <laughs> Settle but, down, everyone. We'll take it. We'll take it. <laughs> but there's also um, some winds of exchange uh, pictures that have also some artwork that has been uh identified and connected so that's super exciting as well yeah i'm not sure how we're gonna do artwork on a podcast but we're gonna try it's gonna be great guys yeah. don't worry yeah. we're experts yeah well, 57 I, I episodes of experience could about to come at you <laughs> oh, oh, oh don't worry we're giving you all three of them um but yeah we did get a little information um from richard garfield this week now this was on an old post um, is it board? It's board game geek, right? Was the website? Yeah. So yep, board game yep. geek, board game geek is a huge player for tracking essentially board games. Um, being able to see what new hotness is board games. I mean, that's been around for quite a while. Uh, the guys actually who run it uh, know quite a few of them, and they're really really nice. Um, having attended board game geek con many many years ago, um, the the website has grown much larger. Um, but the original posts that we see here that we're kind of relating to is Keyforge Call of the Archons. It's in the forums reviews. And it basically is a thread of why why, why is Keyforge struggling or why I don't like Keyforge? Well, why, why this person doesn't like Keyforge. Correct. And to a degree, I think he brings up some good points. Well, but I mean, the original post was a couple years ago. I mean, Draz, you're actually on here from October 14, 2021. And then we get a little bit of hits in January of this year. And all of a sudden, May 9th, um, someone just again posted. And it was is a little bit odd, but they're talking about some other games and like four or five posts down. You can always see all of a sudden see uh, Richard Garfield, designer, and his very, very simple We'll call it a sentence, two sentence. Uh, I statement. believe it's a run on sentence. If it, I'm it, not it, mistaken, it is. But. That's that's why I'm putting it as one. But yeah, you know, what uh, what grade would you give this sentence? Like, is this a B minus? Um, I'm giving or... this a much higher grade because it gives us hope as to ah. existence. See, that <laughs> is where you're going to A plus, you're plus, yeah. plus. I think you're showing favoritism here. I think he needs <laughs> to better sentence structures. But oh, oh, hands down. Um, but l- let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, basically, the comment right above was, I personally hope they bring Keyforge back. But even if they don't, I doubt the game would uh, do much from there. And you can see someone was kind of responding. But Dr. Garfield comes in. I can't promise or disclose anything. But I can say that work is being done. And there are a number of people very serious about getting it back. So, fingers crossed. Yeah. I like it, but that, like that makes me smile. This it, it gives does. me so many questions. I mean that too, but like, but for whatever, like he, it, it, it's this random post buried in this random thread, uh, and like it, it's a little bit of like, hey, you know what? There's uh, there's some guy saying, hey, it's, you know, it's a great game. Don't regret any of the countless hours I've spent playing it, and he's just like, hey. You know, I'm seeing people really working hard to try to get this back. So it could happen. And that's that's pretty cool. That's pretty exciting. Can I, mean, I ask my questions? Yeah. I'm a cynical person. We know. You know, I am sure by now. <laughs> I don't even know how many. I'm aghast at you, your comments here. I am just holding my breath. This is brand news to me. News. Breaking. News. Breaking. Wookie. Um, okay. So. I'm going to break this down the best I can. I know good with words. Don't know why I run a podcast. <laughs> um, but so many questions. So number one. Question number one. When was the, I mean, when was the last time? Because like Richard Garfield is, I don't want to say notorious, but like his business is 
presenting a game, selling a game, and then moving on, right, Mm -hmm. to to next game that he is either designing, selling, pitching, whatever. I wonder, I want to know, number one, how long he stays on a game. You know, like, how long does he stay on as a consultant? I mean, the last time we heard from him was, was it during, that was Vault Warrior, correct? I want to say it was Vault Warrior. It was the last time we heard from Richard Garfield. I I really don't remember specifically, but um, I do remember hearing. I don't remember where and how uh, correct (laughs) this is, but I do remember hearing that he was very involved in the first three sets. Right. Um, I remember hearing that, too. That does ring a bell for me. Yeah. But now we're on set. Well, we're on set. What? Six? Yep. Worlds collide, and then, yeah, we have MM. Now, I also remember hearing at some point that, so, you know, he's creator of magic, right? Magic mm-hmm. Gathering, obviously. Sure. And he is, for the most part, not involved. Not in at magic. all. He hasn't been involved he in magic in many years. Royalties. But I've, I have heard that periodically, I don't know how often that is, but periodically they'll bring him back to consult on certain things. And like ask him certain questions and get his opinion on certain things. So <clears throat> if he's saying these things, I to me that makes you wonder, are they was there a recent consulting engagement they, they had with him where they were asking his opinion on a bunch of stuff? And if it's they possible. were it's possible. I'm oh, complete speculation. So if they were and we also have been told, so let's let's believe it for a second, that set six is one hundred percent designed. That means it's probably not on sex set six. So what's he consulting on? Well, here's what we know. And I don't know if I'm allowed to say this or not. <laughs> but here's what we're gonna guess. But I'm gonna I'm gonna no, this isn't a guess. This is we know okay. Z was with me way back when. I don't know if we, we had a guest on the show and he divulged some information to us about how far they were already in designing sets. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm sure as meta changes and forms, like there's some little tweaks here or there that go into like, oh, no, you know, now we got to tweak this, sure. tweak that, whatever. Sure. Um, at that At that point in time, they were already through set six, moving into set seven. Mm-hmm. Now this is like two years ago, mm-hmm. so I don't know. So the, the my question is number one how how does how does he know? I don't know. I don't know if his Garfield sense was tingling, and like he just knew. Uh-huh. You know what I uh-huh. mean? Yep. Um, and, and that's fine. I mean, I'm not saying he's not privy to the information. I just want to know more. Um, sure. again, non disclosures, yada yada. Yeah. My next biggest thing is why... Okay, I want to scream this so badly, and I'm not going to. I'm going to say it very calmly. (laughs) Why is this coming from Richard Garfield as opposed (laughs) to somebody from FFG? I tweeted this Mm. because I was so incensed. Like, yeah, I'm very happy to see somebody saying something, but why is it coming from Richard Garfield and not an FFG employee? Why am I getting reassured by the game's original designer that, to my knowledge, besides for his name being stamped on the box, um, and I don't even know if that continued after Coda, um, to my knowledge, has nothing to do uh, with the game. Let's see, I have a DT bo- display box here. No decks in it. Cause I, 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 we, just, like, we, yeah. just need, we just need the box. Yeah. yeah Does I'll it say a Richard Garfield game? No, I'm looking. I'm going to Google AOA. The, the made in Germany. That's interesting, actually. Germany wouldn't have expected that. Yeah, we knew there there were some decks made in Germany, in some made decks made yeah. in China. Yeah, those sound familiar. Um, it, I mean, it was huge on it. Yeah, I do not see because I'm looking at Richard some Garfield pictures thing. of AOA had it, but like, just how does he know? How, how how do you know and why why is it coming from you? Oh as wait wait, to... I found it. Oh, the is it on there? De- 
Yeah, unique deck game by Richard Garfield. I had to rotate the box. It's like on the yeah. front. Yeah, uh, that's where it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, so it's still in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're still they're still stringing that cat along for all it's worth, I guess. No, oh, yeah, you got it right. People will see that and be like, "I know that name," right? Like, you'll sell Maybe. a few decks that way. Maybe I just I, I'm a little dis I'm a little I'm a little disappointed that it's coming why? from him as opposed I, I guess, to I, I guess the question for me Wookie is why why be disappointed I think that it is a great sign for us that Richard Garfield still cares enough to be able to take care of his baby and that's it it's his game sure so he still has skin in the game to be able to say hey this has so much potential we really enjoyed it and why not if he can be that spokesperson that can say things that frankly FFG may not be able to take it as what do you mean ffg is unable there why are they unable to because as soon as ffg goes ahead and steps in and says that it's by you know we're working this is where the date is they want you want to have specific information i mean that's what all of us as key forgers are looking for can you please give us a date versus versus an open-ended hey it's another year yeah i think that there's a lot of people even um, trying to think of like to, to be honest with you, if FFG came in here, right? If a somebody from FFG says, hey, you know, I can't make any promises, but uh, people are working hard behind the scenes to get this back on track. So fingers crossed, we'll be able to get it back to you. I would have been pleased as punch. But they don't have the workforce to do it, and they clearly haven't invested in the game in that manner. I'm, I'm not going ahead and jumping around but that that's the reality of what we're dealing with i didn't know you could tip reason. on board game board game geek you yes yeah this, po- this post has a buck 12 on it yeah <laughs> yeah go get a oh, well, geek, geek points they're it's not geek points, points. Oh, geek you've, points. You've i'm been sorry able to use yeah, it for yeah, a while I, I have a lot of geek points i haven't used them in a while um but uh i saw yeah, your I mean, name for whatever pop up reason this is their strategy right this is ffg's strategy um just basically say nothing now we you know obviously we we don't think that's a good strategy but uh um i have 6600 geek gold sitting around by the way so just to give you a sense of um but uh yeah yeah it's uh i don't know i look would i've been happier if it was ffg Yes. Am I? Do I super care because I'm hearing something from Richard Garfield? Yeah, I mean that's where I'm at. And, and I follow suit. I think that it's some information. He is m- more in the know, or potential more in the know than I myself am. Um, and so we'll take any glimmer of hope at this point in time. I mean, even the recent post that came out from uh, Marco Proati, who's the who does the Italian KeyForge. And it's like the truth. And you're talking about the algorithm being broken and information of just sales coming down. That was posted earlier today that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. People are gluing and holding on to information. I still think that Keyforge offers, with with no decks that are brand new being produced, uh, what we've been able to do in the year with the community that's here, they look at deck sales as decreasing, as Marco points out. I completely disagree with that. I think that... The idea that you're still selling decks when there's no promotion or no in-person or live events happening is incredible. I think that the community is is holding events like ABR, like Swindle, like Vault Keeper that you know Joker has coming up for this weekend. That shows how much potential is here, and I think Doctor Guardfield sees that. Um, if if he gives us a glimmer of hope, I'm very excited to be able to see what's happening and what oh. the future will bring. Where do the deck sales Boy, I'm, come? Uh, I'm I'm more on uh, the Wookie side here because I don't. I mean, like, there's a core group of us. We play a lot of KeyForge, and it's a great game. And we keep getting a couple tricklers in here and there, so the community kind of grows. But it seems like it's shrinking faster than it's growing. Um, hopefully, Vault Keeper gets signups here in the last day, or that's done now, right? Like. Or sign up uh, today because his numbers are not very good I th- yet. I thought you could sign sad. up until Saturday. No, it's the day before. Is it I'll the day before? Friday? Through Friday. Right, for, I'm sorry, not I mean, Saturday. Yeah, I meant so Friday. Through, tomorrow. Through tomorrow. Tomorrow. You're, you're always going to get last like, minute signups, but but yeah, it's probably it's going to be down. Oh uh, yeah, but time. it was twenty twenty two people as of yesterday or today. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
So and that's, and that's for an event with it, with live cash prizes, right? It is. You know the, what? The cash prizing is not what the the people are still playing Keyforge now aren't in this game because it has cash prizes anymore, right? Like that ended a real long time ago. People playing this because there's cash prizes, right? That's there. There hasn't been enough of them that the cash prize players are around. People who play this are more in the line now of the ABR league where they want fun, interesting games. And they're looking for super high end competitive play. The people who are playing regularly. So I, I mean, like, I love what Vault Keeper is. Um, I totally support it, but it isn't. It's you know, it's it's it's. I, I don't. I don't want to say except it's hard to build a community now because the like our advertising is. Um, Please too play inclusive. with me. It right? is well. You're, you're no, we only no, advertise to, to Keyforge players in our own discords, right? Um, so if we want to be able to grow the community, one, we need the support from FFG to get into the larger gaming spaces. That's our game halls. That's the game stores. You need to be able to go in and basically show it to other CCGs, TCG players, board game players. You need, you need money and people with time, which is what big Correct. companies are supposed to provide. Right now, all we do is a bunch of people who have day jobs and a small amount of money to waste on a game that doesn't make them money um, for sport. So like, if you really want this to grow, it's not us that can do it. Yeah. I don't think that this we, is a matter of us being able to produce and grow. People game. find the game like without podcasts like us and without events like we're running happening, then people who do find the game don't stay interested because there's nothing going on with the game. Right. But we don't have, well, nobody here has really tried too hard that I'm aware of to really try to reach new people. Plus, like I said, it's like it's it's not our job. It's not our thing. You know, we're not trying to get on other gaming related podcasts and advertise and. You know. Get it out to a big world. No, our so, our goal is to be able to support people who have found the game and to be able to enjoy it uh, that that community uh, to make it as enjoyable as possible for those who are still here who are enjoying it. But no, we're not growing at an ex- exponential rate because we just don't have the reach. No, we're we're shrinking. I correct. We are I'm hands. Sure we're we hands down shrinking. Yes, we know that. But still, to see that the decks are being bought and you have decks that are there, I think what was missed in, from Marco, in my very pessimistic uh thing there is go and look at the fact that decipher star trek still sells decks um there's a lot of games that aren't actively produced that still have a plain selling crowd there's a big secondary market on netrunner too like good games which these are good games yep like we'll always continue to have somewhat of a player base like you used to be a big minis player star wars mini and there's still there's people who are like making their own sets to keep playing that game. Like good games will have players that stay around, but it just keeps shrinking because there's no way to really build anymore. I mean, I just um, I still kind of follow uh, like Raw Deal. Um, they just had like a 500 person tournament. I mean, it was it was their big thing, but they had a huge tournament. So like deal. I don't. I don't even. But know like this online or how did they do no, it? No, they they did it in person. It was it was on their one of their Facebook posts. They they, they w- did it w- in person. W- raw deal. Yeah, it's that was a customizable game. card game. It came out. I don't know when it came out. Oh man, probably early two thousands. Two thousand. Up two thousand. There you go. Like so, if you go to <laughs> if you go to Board Game Geek, it's just like a torso shot of a dude in underwear that sounds right that's right re- that's wrestling yeah, in a nut- that's, that's wrestling in a nutshell <laughs> like what do you want <laughs> but like the fact is is that yeah like like they just had a 500 person tournament you know it's like their big their big year-end deal right like the, i forget what it's called but you know it has a name and it's wrestling related but 
They just had their yeah, big year end deal. Five hundred players, but five hundred okay. player. I mean, I don't know. They said it was like five hundred and eleven people or five hundred something like that. But like you know, they showed shots, and it was quite. Was this, this five hundred people at a wrestling event that also had a raw deal tournament? No. Mm. No, they they booked out a hall. They showed shots. If I can find them, I'll I'll post them up. But. Um, yeah, no, they, they, they had a legit thing. And I know, I know Star Wars still has a huge following as well. So to st- again, you named Star Trek again, huge, still a huge, huge following. And they're still making cards. Like, believe it or not, some of these Star Wars cards are still going for 50 to a hundred dollars, which is crazy to think. Cause I mean, the game hasn't been produced since this is like, oh, five. Yeah. Like. It's the the right age period is coming around where the early two thousand stuff that's now fifteen or twenty years ago. Is it so like people cool again? Well, people who were in their teens are now in their thirties making a bunch of money and want to relive their childhood and mm. just like everything becomes hot, like crappy old card games are becoming hot now. Like my Babylon five cards are now worth money, even though they're still the same trash they were when I got them. Um, like, best TV it's, show. It's just oh, awful TV show. Bad, what best TV show? Oh, Why'd God. you get the cards if you didn't like the TV show? Because I worked for the company. Oh, did you? That's interesting. Yeah, I was on their demo team. Interesting. Interesting. Either so, way, I, I, I would have liked it to come from... I would like something to come from FFG. Again, like, just anything. Just a glimmer of hope. Just an article saying, like, again, like I posted on Twitter, something. And uh, literally anything. That That's mine. If, if you're happy with what you got, Cool Beans. I do find it funny. I've been what? watching... I watch a lot of the uh, the Archon Arcana. And when they post, like, the, the, the statistics... They do it, like, once a week. They post like the statistics of like how many decks are being listed to the master vault. Weirdly enough, I mean it's between like five and seven thousand decks a week are getting posted to the master vault. That's a real number. (laughs) But but that was the piece that I was going ahead and looking at is okay, you look at a decrease in deck sales and they're looking at sets. But the idea is that you have multiple sets that are out now. And so you actually have to have a combined amount. And yes, some of those are discounted. But I, I don't think that was looked at from Marco. I, I think that it was a missed overall understanding. Some people are looking at those deals and pulling AOA. Some people are still playing Coda. And we have others that are really enjoying DT. You also don't have in real life play. And so Sealed, which used to go ahead and push and pull quite a few other decks just for playing Sealed, which is a great aspect of Keyforge, isn't happening for many, many, many game stars. Yeah. All right. Uh, what package were you looking at, Drascore, for well, Dear Richard Garfield? What was what was that? What package were you looking at for the Richard Garfield? Oh, oh, oh! I was looking at the just the display box of the um, Dark Tidings. I just so wanted to know way, if it still said like if they're the still trying to string that pony along. Like it's a it Richard is, Garfield it game. It is yep. no longer on the single pack for Dark Tidings. Okay. But it's on it's on the display box. It is. It is. It, well, I looked at I yes, while you guys were talking, is. I googled them all. Um and yeah, every display box has a like bottom but left corner a Richard Garfield game. Mass Mutation still had it on the single deck. Oh, did they? It is now missing from Dark Titans. I mean, either gotcha. way, you know, it's it's that it, that was kind of their claim to fame in the very beginning was the fact that, you know, it was it was a Richard Garfield game, mm-hmm. right? Like that was job. that was their claim to fame, and for a while there, you, you you couldn't buy the stuff. I remember when it was sold out everywhere. I actually I yep. traveled to the Dells to get Keyforge decks, which is about an hour, two hours yeah. away from me. Is that like Delaware, uh, Wisconsin Dells? It's kind of where all the <laughs> the Dells is like your. Staycation. The water park capital of the world. Yeah, whatever. Really? Um, yeah, it's got yeah. the most water parks. Noah's Ark's there. Um, every hotel there has like an indoor water park of some sort. It's like it's pretty cool. It's like when you're like, hey, I want to take a vacation, but I don't want to spend a bucket of money. Mm-hmm. You go to you go to the Dells. 
Gotcha. That's that's the Wisconsin thing. That's a that's a fun tidbit I did not know about Wisconsin. Uh, we'll have to take you next time you're here. Sweet. Um, give me a. Uh, Give me some margaritas before we go down the... Uh, yeah, there is definitely the plenty of places to find margaritas down there. Nice. Nice. Wookie can finally make us wear the, the AC Speedos he bought us. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I didn't tell you guys. How did you know? Who told well, you? Well, they're, they're modeled after the WWE Raw. I told Speedos, JR not so. to tell I told JR not to tell anybody. Clearly, he told is, Dan. <laughs> is is that what we're going to go ahead and have as our like new icon for uh, the new image for our podcast? It's just, just going to be our four butts. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be our oh, four butts with the AC logo on them. It's going to sell oh. so many copies. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, moving forward, we did get some new art. Um, do we get names of these cards? I guess they're kind of on there, right? Mm-hmm. Which one do you guys want to start with? Yeah, they all have names on them. Um, how about, sh- how about the first one? Uh, well, take it away then. All right. So the first one. Uh, so this. But all right. So what? What is this? So on ArtStation, uh, you know, that's a place, a website where artists will upload their artwork, and in general, they're they're supposed to only up their, uh, upload their artwork when, uh, you know, whatever NDAs is lifted, whatever embargoes have lifted and whatnot. And then, uh, you know, there's different agreements with, you know, depending on the company you're working for is what you can do with that. Right. And um, um, so uh, there's one artist whose name I put back over here is Colin, uh, Colin Cyril, 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 maybe. Uh, and he, not too long ago, uploaded three different pieces of artwork to ArtStation. So the first one is, uh, and all three are definitely Keyforged. So the first one is Yixi, the Iron Captain. And so you can see here, uh, there's a there's a Mars, uh, well, three Mars creatures, but you, the Captain is is in the front here, and he's got that big tank on his back, the big tank of green whatever the heck that is that the um you know the capture guy had in in uh, coda what, what was Am- that amber conduction name? unit uh that's not the one i'm thinking of but maybe it's there too i was thinking of the two power i think you're thinking of y- 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 Ugh, i'm gonna yeah. butcher this elixir's marauder there you go the marauder um terrible card but uh this guy looks way cooler because he's got uh, he's got the pack and it's glowing and there's laser beams flying all around him and he's got this this symbol on I, I don't is that on his head or is he wearing like a beret it's a little hard to tell uh, but then he's got uh, I the, think it's on his head maybe, maybe I don't really see a beret it could, it could be tilted I don't know it probably is just no it's on his, head. on his head and then he's got it on his shoulder Man. and his knee pad and he's got this it's like Mars it's green next and it's what? red it's red there's red right so so green you remember red. the only official spoiler we got was for this this rebel leader uh this martian re- rebel leader and this guy's definitely wearing some of that red so i think this guy the iron captain is is definitely part of this because uh, every mars rebel. person we've seen not every mars person but a majority of the mars creatures we've seen before are all wearing purple it's a new enclave mm-hmm Except for there's only one that I think we've ever seen wear red, and that's Mind Warper. Mm. I could be wrong. Now everybody's going to be like, no, this guy's wearing red, too. (laughs) But yeah, well, it's fun to tell Loki's wrong. So that's right. That's please please go ahead. Double check everyone. (laughs) Yes, please go ahead. Double check me. But that's fine. But every card I just I'm kind of scrolling through all the Mars cards, all the ones where you actually see a Martian, you know. Not like the Dominator or the Jammer, um, like Zixie's the Many, Yixel Bolter, all wearing purple. This guy, red. Yeah. Well, but and we like, kn- we know blast from her wall and the charging yeah. forward. It's cool. A- am I the only one who's read Tales from the Crucible? Probably. I read it. Okay, so uh, obviously they go into the different enclaves that are mm-hmm. there, and Mars will have different groups that will kind of be combative against each other. And so that that has already been exposed, um, and I think that's a storyline that Keyforge as a whole could definitely go further down. So I, I'm excited to see what they can do. Um, I, I do hope that they bring in the books and some of the information that we learned from it. Yep, 
yep, I think uh, I'm I'm excited to see this. And yes, there is a lot of green. Sheep is right, but there's I don't know. This is this is way cool than the Marauder artwork with the cityscape and the whole blasted on the wall behind him. I, I think it's cool. It's cool looking. Well, you have the contrast between the red and green being on opposite ends of the spectrum mm-hmm. for the color, color wheel. Behind. Yep. And so that really helps it to be able to pop. I think with the multiple Mars creatures that are here, I think it's a very well done. So I like it. Same here. All right. Should we go into the next one? I was going to say, do, which, do you want to, should we go into Dark Lamp? Mm-hmm. Let's go into Dark Lamp. Because uh, this one's a little more uh, inconspicuous. Um, we kind of, we got a cyborg. I'm going to say cyborg, right? It's definitely, they- well, it, it, uh, maybe not a cyborg, maybe a robot. I guess it could be a robot. Definitely probably a robot. How um, are you going with? What's that? I th- what house would? It's Man, I want to say shadows. shadows. I want to say shadows because it's the purple. Uh, there's no face. Right, so you know, very hooded. The fingers look very shadowsy. Uh, I almost agree. Al- I, Alfie, I, I, I see. I initially saw this as shadows as well. So you see a purple cloak kind of over the head. You see almost like the Jawa eyes that are there, but yep. the the feet, um, kind of more hoof and more mechanical. I think mm-hmm. that uh, I could see a potentially a little bit of logos with some of the the robot. Uh, parts that are visible, but I definitely, I personally would guesstimate that this would be shadows. Remember, That's no right. logos in this set. I know no shadows That's... is gone. No logos, no shadows. So no logos, no efficiency. I mean, That's, but it, when we're looking, could it be we the new it. trading house. It could. This guy's like maybe. So what do they call? What are they called? The impacts of Equidon? Compact of Equidon. The, al- oh, the, al- the alpacas of Equidon. Is, you got it. Is he Nailed lighting? It that thing or is he stealing the light is he like got one of those things from um a deluminator <laughs> oh like oh. Harry Potter style yeah I don't know or is he lighting it yeah I guess I was gonna uh, say he was lighting it but now that you put uh, it that way I guess I see him he's stealing it I think but so. I, I saw it as shadows but you're right shadows is not here so I so no, he lo- does you mean logos look... sorry yeah logos well, you is not cyborg around. Right and and I said cyborg like... originally. Now I'm thinking he might just be a just a, a a robot. Well, so the Grim Reaper. Oh, right? the spot right on the uh, anomaly. Yeah, he looked a little bit like this. Like he was like both ghostly and mechanical. And this guy looks both ghostly and mechanical. Now that looks like a that's like a fleshy hand, not a mechanical yeah. hand there. Um. So, but, but the other arm, I'm going to assume that's an arm that's holding the lamp. I, I don't know, unless it's like attached to his back. It's very like, interesting. I just looked up the Grim Reaper card mm-hmm. and yeah, you're right. It looks very, very similar, very robotic. Um, the eyes, uh, they're sunken in kind of the Jawa eyes where there's no face, but they have the eyes. Yep. Um, and I'm kind of going back and forth again, kind of the hooded figure no um, the colors the color scheme is completely different blue the color scheme is different for sure colors like different but the, the blue, it is a blue and aesthetics. red versus the the purple but like yeah the aesthetics right no. you can't and you don't see it no i disagree not at all i i mean it's not the same guy but like no i'm not saying it's the same person and he's a robot mm-hmm. specter because mm-hmm. this guy I'll stand I, behind that no no <laughs> okay Ooh, right on. Anyways, next card. It's kind of purple, so it's an Aquian. Can we go on to something interesting? Uh, no, 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 no. What are you talking about, Sheep? <laughs> this next card. <laughs> this next card, yeah. So he's, he's an Aquan. He's floating around. Sybil Wine, Weimer? Weimer. Weimer? So, Weimer? Weimer. Wait, yeah, you exactly. say he. I think it could be... Could be she. Yeah, it could I be... didn't check. No. Um... But, uh, and what does he, she, they, I don't know, have in their hand, but, uh, it looks like the frogorific rod. And if you look at the text of the, uh, frogorific, frigorific, whatever it is, uh, rod, 
It says, it has a quote. Is it cold in here or is it just you? Which is totally a badass B-movie line, right? Uh, by Sybil Weimer. So, uh, so that's kind of cool to see that reference in that previous card. And then here, it's here the leader. Is. You think? I don't no. know if it looks no, leader. No, it's made definitely. I don't the think leader. it's leader like. Not a shrimp. It's not the leader. Yeah, I, I definitely do want the Aquian <laughs> leader to well, be a shrimp. I, I definitely did, want that. I I think that's going back all the way to September. Uh, this card was posted elsewhere um, with what it potentially does. Uh, the translation. So when your opponent's turn begins, discard the top card of his deck. Exhaust all the characters in the same house with that card. That's what I think is exciting to be able to see. <laughs> I think it meant that's creatures, cool. but. That is a pretty cool. I do yeah, well, dig it's that. Yeah, well, I do but, dig the power though. So mm-hmm. actually, digging into that, the idea of characters versus creatures is a really interesting item because they're bringing in token. That is and true. So, they're bringing in tokens. You know, so that was where they were looking at: is creatures and characters? Is it just referencing the tokens? Is it rep- rep- referencing um, both? And that may be a little change that we might see. I, I I don't know. And it could just be a translation piece as well. I think a new creature type character could be fun. Could it include tokens and your creatures? I guess it could. I mean, maybe. You you could have beings that are higher than your random critters. You know, maybe they're a little more powerful, they have more staying power. Maybe a multiplayer format involving some sort of like commander type thing. Oh, goodness, <laughs> I, just, I, I I hope that the idea of fun. characters would incorporate tokens plus creatures. I want to keep it simple there so that we don't have to overthink it. Um, I hope that it's not just referencing token. <laughs> well, wouldn't a to- wouldn't a token creature still be a creature? I I don't know. I, mean, I would and assume again, so. I guess are, we, didn't, some... we didn't make the rules, so who knows? That's minutia. Yep. Yeah, I think the power yeah. is pretty good. Right, like, you, you know, it, obviously, if you have overlap with your opponent uh, in terms of houses, it's going to be, um, you know, you chance you're going to exhaust your stuff, right? Mm-hmm. But, uh, but the more houses there are over time, the less chance and you well, you have that there's overlap. And uh, a little bit of interesting is that this is in the house that includes bubbles, so mm. likely to see that come around, and then you get to choose what's on top of their deck. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Or, or uh, yeah, the discard from hand one. Yep, yep. Or whatever. Uh, brain drain. Yes, because somebody brain had drain. a triple brain drain deck against me. The Loka yeah. car. Loka cars. <laughs> evil <laughs> twins are triple brain drain decks. Oh, nice, nice. You just you're going up against all the fun stuff, right? Triple brain drain, double chronophage. Yeah, it's the real deal. And he's doing it all with AOA sealed. Yeah. What a, what a champ. <laughs> what a champ. Mm-hmm. Big mm-hmm. baller over there. Mm. Um, But that's kind of it for, like, news and new stuff coming out for Keyforge. It's nice to have some new stuff uh, to kind of talk about. We can all agree to disagree on all the other fun stuff, which makes podcasting fun. But um, you guys got exchange format on here. What's this for? Yeah, so this is actually the format for this week in ABR, right? or last week if you're listening when, it, when this releases. Uh, and I had never played this before, and I thought it was interesting. It generated lots of conversation in our team channel just about what is even the right way to to, to approach i guess if we're going to be starting to talk Um, about like relevant things i should really like start releasing these not a week after (laughs) (laughs) it's just been so long since we've had actual relevant news relevance uh you know what i mean like when you like i normally what i would do is after we were done recording i would edit it up you know and then i'd post it it'd be out friday right but like you know if we're gonna go into like this week in abr you know, I guess I should probably yeah, I start mean, releasing these. Uh, you know, all, like, I mean, it could daily. just be that other week in ABR. <laughs> Plus, we're, we're actually two weeks behind, right? Because we've got two in the can that haven't released. When I'm looking at the, um, I'm gonna end up right releasing now, but... two this week. Okay. Yeah, last week I'm gonna end up 
releasing like the final the episode. It's just got to it's gone in. Uh, one should be out in actually one should be out now, um, and then the other one I'll do in a couple days just to kind of break break it up mm-hmm. a little bit. Gotcha, gotcha. But you know, um, somebody oh. not naming names <clears throat> made uh, a- editing one of them difficult. <laughs> not naming names. No names to be named cheap. here. You're an idiot. <laughs> it wasn't cheap, was it? Or was no. it? Uh, well, you know, he who shall not be named. Uh, I see, I see. He uh, has bad mic problems these days. Mm. Another fucking Sir Morrow's. God bless it. Say the line. I can't generate any space dollars for him to steal. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> he can't even yell about his space dollars because he has none. Uh. All right. But anyways, back to exchange oh, the, for ABR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what is this thing, right? So uh, how does this format work? So basically what you do is you bring two decks. And then uh, you and your opponent, you're each going to look at each other's decks. Each of you are going to select one of your opponent's decks that you want to use. The other deck is going to stay with your opponent. So you're exchanging uh, one of those two decks. So you're going to end up with a deck that's yours and a deck that is your opponent. And uh, then you have to win with both decks in a best of three. So the concept is that, hey, does, you know, does this solve, I think is part of the thought, and I don't know if it does, but the, the, hey, does this solve a little bit some of the adaptive situation uh, where, hey, you're going to bring something and then you're, you know, you go to chains and who's better at chain bidding, right? Where this is like, do you bring, can you bring decks that um, you feel comfortable beating each deck with each other, right? So if you bring deck A, deck B, you'll feel comfortable. When you play deck A, you can beat deck B. And when you play deck B, you can beat deck A. That's the concept. Um, and it's a interesting, tricky concept. I, I don't know. What did you guys what did you guys think about this sheep Ewok? After playing, I now feel even more like it's a race to the top. Race the like top meaning if I if I would have brought my two best decks okay. that I know really, really good, mm-hmm. then I'm favored to win the match of my good deck versus my good deck, and then I'm heavily favored to destroy whatever else they brought. Well, but but you've already so if that's the matchup though, you've already won with your good deck that you brought. So now you have to win with whatever they brought, right? Why? I can start with their deck. You have to win with both decks to win, right? Yeah. So... So I start with their bad deck, and if they play my good deck, good riddance. Okay, so you take... Okay, so and you beat if that, they right. play their bad deck and I win, okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then we're at my worst case scenario, which is my good deck versus my good deck, which I am feel I'm slightly favored on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's uh, that's my opinion of how it goes down. Um, although in this case I did bring the better decks, but not monstrously better, just quite a bit better. And then mm-hmm. I got untamed, bursted, and destroyed anyway. So is this is this still <laughs> is this still the proverbial challenge of player skill versus deck skill? Is this is this what we're trying to solve with this format? Uh, essentially. I think maybe, right? Like, it, it's trying to... Because I feel like we've all been trying to figure this out since the very yeah. beginning of player skill versus deck skill. Yep. Um, and, I mean, because I think we kind of all... I, I mean, I don't know. I've come to the conclusion that, you know, deck does, you know, 60-40 mm-hmm. when it comes to that, where it's, you know, 60% deck, 40% player. And and the worse the worse your deck is, the more that number goes the opposite way of what you want. Um, I I don't want to say it. I'm just gonna be quiet in the corner. I, I have things to say, but like I don't want the verbal backlash 
of of w- what me saying it brings. This is the first time I'll ever be quiet because <laughs> wow. I know I know what's going to be said. I Write I just it know it. Episode right? fifty seven. Episode fifty seven. So we of Drascore. We yeah. um. She sucks at Keyforge. Oh. The, so the so we thought about a whole bunch of different possibilities and strategy and all that. And um we thought about a bunch of different things. We ended up on sort of two options, right? Hey, you should probably bring strong ish decks, right? This doesn't get us to the point where you can probably you can bring junk and expect to to do okay and force them to play junk and then you'll be okay, right? Like we didn't feel like that was um that was going to happen. So you got to bring decently good deck. Um, but we also thought about like, there's an interesting play to try to bring a two very different SAS level decks where, you know, let's say one is, I don't know, just make it up 75 and a 65 or something. Right. And you feel good that you can beat the 75 with your 65. Um, and so you think that 65 is like an outperformer. And then uh, it gives them a little bit of a conundrum of, well, do they do they step into your trap or do they try to counter your trap um, and, and go from there? So that, that was another thought that we had. Um, and we tested a few of those scenarios and they were okay. Um, we didn't really, we were like, we wish we had more time <laughs> to sort of figure out if, if this is truly a viable strategy or not. Um, but um, I don't know. I guess so far we're not doing that great this week. So I don't know. Maybe we'd come out in the right spot. I was going to say, I, I hate to we'll tell see. you this, Drazcore. I think Cheap actually already solved it for you. You solved it? Just I bring did. the banger decks? That that's oh. always the rule. I don't care what you're playing. Bring good. Good equals good equals good. And if if your deck is favored to win, you will probably you will probably win. I, I don't think I don't it's... see how you get away from that in this one. Like if you have significantly worse decks, you are at a significant disadvantage. And even like so. I mean, I guess good 75s can, on occasion, beat good 90s. And there is that other part of ABR where you can't use the same decks multiple times in the league, and most people aren't stacked that deep in super strong stuff when you also have a triad, an adaptive, and an Archon week to to support. So most people aren't, there aren't that many, like, monster, monster decks to stack a team of, how many we got this? year this ten, season 10 per team 10 so that's you're talking at least 40 really good decks um and that doesn't include this which would make it 60 really good decks per team that's yep. that's a lot of really good decks to be asking for i yes. don't have six bong baller decks no me neither no. i only have only x-ray does yes Four. You're ahead. You're ahead of me. I don't think I have any baller decks. Maybe one. Maybe. Uh, I mean, I have stuff I like. I don't have anything where I'm like, this is the best. Um, but I've I have stuff I enjoy enjoy playing and would bring to events. Right. I get it. Um. Yeah. I mean, I hate to tell you. I think I think Sheep just kind of solved it. It's like vanilla ice that way. If you got a problem, yo sheep solves it. You know, it is. It's <laughs> just, just grumpy this week because I got beat and I decided what I should have done differently. Uh, wow. I say, I say. The old hindsight. Because I, I did get beat. I got beat right before we casted. Uh, yeah, I, I did bring decks that I thought were a little tricky to play with the thought that I'm going to be able to to pilot them better than my opponent. That that was good decks that uh, are uh, a little tricky. That was my that was my thought. We'll we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. I uh, I um I still love this idea, like that we all think like, oh, this is a tricksy deck. 
Like we're all Gollum sitting in the corner. Oh, the Trixie deck. I the the one of the decks I was given. So my opponent, who is uh, Avi, who won an Australian. She won the last Australian league, I think. Mm. Um, so very That's good great. player, but brought like a sixty-two Coda and a sixty-seven AOA. Right, and in this format, you present decks to each other, and then you get some time to review them, and you pick which one of your opponent's decks. And I think it was like thirty seconds after she sent them to me, I said ready, because uh, I was presented with a coda and an AOA. Like, there's any choice? You take the AOA deck. Oh my god, I'm going home. <laughs> well, that's going just sheep being sheep. Going home? Just can't. I just can't with sheep. Some days. Uh, apparently I was wrong because I didn't win and then that oh. stupid um, Toda deck did a Hunting Witch uh, Niffle Ape Niffle Ape Troop Call replayed mm. Niffle Ape Niffle Ape Niffle Queen which was on the board. Mm. That's a lot of amber. That is a lot and of I amber. And I couldn't draw into my amber control. Like I just like I drew into a hand of six cards and not a single one of them had amber control on them. Although there were five out of the 15 cards left in deck had amber control. I, I couldn't get one mm. to, to get me back into that game. I We're see. still pretty close, but if I'd drawn a little bit better, I think I would have got it. Draw that. better. That's right. And I did not. Mm. Yep. 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 So I'll let you know. I'll let you know if my uh, report back next week. Sir. Yeah, my strategy worked out, or if I'm like uh, I was a fool. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you fool. So. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, but let's move into final thoughts. We're coming up upon our hour. Um, Drazcore, what do you got for the thoughts de la final? Hey, just go out, play Cape Forge, have fun, right? I'm I'm looking forward to Vault uh, Vault Keeper this weekend. And uh, just playing some Key Forge and uh, having a good time. So, get at it. Mr. Walk Jr.? I second that uh, hopefully I'll be able to see some of you talk during Vault Keeper this weekend. If you aren't there, please stay positive. We got Garfield's comments. We had some new art. So, a lot of great news coming out. Um, even if it's not from FFG, we'll take it as a win. And I'm looking forward to the future. Sheep. Yes, I want a future of Keyforge 2. Perfect. So you guys know where to follow us. You can find us all on Twitter at Archon's Corner. If you want to help support us on Patreon, that's a thing you could do as well. Um, $5 a month will get you ad-free episodes, as well as uh, eventually uh, Wook Ray. No, Wook Wook Core. Something. I don't know. We're going to be, me and Drascore will, will, will be doing some stuff. Um, here shortly. Uh, my and by that, you feel like and, you're and just not means... throwing out Ewok? No, no, no. I wasn't no, hey. asked. Well, do, do you want to? I thought you has there's specific requests like anything uh, but sheep. I, I don't know. Idea. I looked at your schedule and it said you were booked. I don't know if you're not <laughs> booked. You can come on. <laughs> sheep, you got to unblock Wookie. You got yeah. You got to unblock me. <laughs> stop. <laughs> stop I mean, stop deleting okay. my messages. <laughs> If they're going to go ahead and wear little wrestling shorts, we're okay just to watch from the sideline, okay? I'll be wearing wrestling. Ogle. I'll be wearing wrestling pants. Yeah, I mean, like you guys tearaways. are more than welcome. I just I, I didn't I I know you guys. It's summer. I know Ewoks busy. Summer is a busy time for everyone. Um but no, you're more than welcome to come on. I just I didn't know you were interested. I thought you hated I, I have me. an idea. That could involve everyone, but I got to work on it a little bit. Well, if you don't need me, I'm fine. I can I can be thrown out. I'm just I mean, feeling oh, insulted. I'm not throwing the baby oh, out with bathwater oh. here. I mean, I didn't know you you had you yeah. you wanted to come on and talk about different topics. You got to keep that bathwater. That keep, bathwater's precious. Get, get rid of the ba- get rid of the baby. And keep the bathwater. <laughs> I I know a little bit about just about everything. Nice. Well, it seems. Uh, but and then I got a strong dislike for many things. So Perfect. It's always fun. The, so we'll put those. In, we'll put those complain. in the chat, and then for the things you have a strong dislike on, I guess you just don't have to. I mean, whatever. Whoever comes, comes. Maybe that's maybe that's probably what's going to happen. Is we're just going to set something up. Here's what we're going to go through this week, and whoever shows up, shows up. That there seems fair. 
right? Seems mm-hmm. fair to me. Mm-hmm. Um, all righty. Uh, but anyways, over on the Patreon, you can find us, Archon's Corner, for Patreon, Facebook, and Twitter at Archon's Corner. Guys, as always, it's been a pleasure, and we'll see everybody next week. Happy Fortune. Next week. Next week.